Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to bring you episode number 6 of our FIFA 16 Leicester City career mode. Now today of course I'll be bringing you 3 more matches today, all in the Barclays Premier League. Last time out we played Stoke, we played Arsenal in the Barclays Premier League, picked up a loss and a draw but we did manage to beat Wolves in uh, in the second round of the Capital One Cup. Now in the background you'll be seeing uh, the squad report uh, because obviously we've gone through another month in in game. Uh, so guys like Ngano Kante there you can see has gone up an overall 277. Uh, but in this episode, what we're focusing on in this episode, uh, we'll be looking at some youth scouting, we'll be looking at some training, but obviously as I said, looking at three games. Uh, today we play Norwich, we play Crystal Palace, uh, but in the middle of that we play Southampton. So uh, three games in the Barclays Premier League potentially could get a win out of all three. I think Southampton should prove to be the most difficult, uh, but potentially we could be looking at uh, three wins out of today's episode, having had a fairly difficult time last time out after a very unlucky loss against Stoke 1-0 and also a draw against Arsenal, but nil-nil in that draw against Arsenal, especially given uh, how well they played is probably a decent result. In the background, as I said, you can see the squad report just coming towards the uh, the young players now. Riyad Mahrez is now back from injury. He's gone up one overall now to 75, as you can see there. Jeffrey Schlupp and Danny Drinkwater at one. Uh, other names that, that have gone up an overall, N'Golo Kante, uh, Gokan Inla, Richie Delat has gone up an overall. Obviously, Sisto's gone up two. Same for Riedewald, but they've both been trained. Now it is time, though, to get into the first game of this episode. We play Norwich at Carrow Road, so away from home in... In this one, uh, in previous career modes, I found Norwich a fairly difficult team to play uh, when they've been promoted from the championship. As you can see, there's the player to watch, Andre Cramrich, the top scorer in the league with eight goals. Quite an astonishing start for him. There you can see the uh, starting lineup in the background. Jeffrey Schluck coming into the side to replace Fuka Arto, Mazuaku, and Go Kante. And Inla there as defensive mids with Dyer and Sisto as wingers, uh, and Bolo and Cramrich there as strikers. Mares will be back soon be before the end of the episode, do not worry. As you can see, though, Pion and Sisto, the Dane. Uh, putting the ball into the box there for Briel Donald Dembolo. Fantastic touch there to get away from the defender. Somehow shrugging off the defenders, but unfortunately putting the shot wide. Martin Olsen, though, putting a ball to the back post there for Nathan Redmond. And a fantastic save there with the feet from Kasper Schmeichel, the Dane in our goal. Moving into the second half already, and Norwich are going forward again here with Malumbu. But it's a very wild and rash shot that goes in the end very high and very wide. As you can see, though, Nathan Dyer trying to test Martin Olsen. Olsen lunges in, he does get the ball. But the referee's given a penalty, and yet again, we have won a penalty here, and that definitely is not a penalty. I know Olsen's taken Dyer first, but he's got the ball quite clearly, so I'm not really entirely sure why the referee's given, uh, given a penalty there. I suppose it perhaps makes up for the Stoke penalty last episode. As you can see, though, Cramrich steps up to get his ninth goal of the season, and we are 1-0 up here against Norwich, having not really played too well. It's been a pretty dull game. Uh, as this is the case a lot of the time on this game, unfortunately. However, we are now 1-0 up, and now we've got the momentum. Pione Sisto finding N'Golo Kante on the edge of the area with five minutes to go, and he just puts it wide, unfortunately. Uh, but going into the final few minutes, and we're just trying to hold on now. Norwich trying to pile people forward there, but Riedewald's done a fantastic job there to get the ball off Alexander Tetti. He's fa now found Robert Huth, who can now clear the ball away, but he's left the ball behind. Robert Huth has left the ball behind. What is he doing? What is he doing? Hands on hips from Robert Huth. That's not going to help you now. He's just literally left the ball behind. I wanted him to clear the ball away. And he's just... He's just jogged past it. Oh, for good... Well, nevertheless, that has literally cost us three points. It's cost us a net two points, I suppose you could say. But, I mean, I just don't know what happened. Robert Huth just deciding literally to leave the ball behind. Everyone told me to play Robert Huth. I'm not saying this is your fault whatsoever. It's probably, it's probably, it's just, it's just a ridiculous AI thing. But unfortunately, this is the reason why I wasn't so keen on playing Robert Huth. Because he's got no technical ability whatsoever. Um, and also, yeah, I mean, he's, he's good defensively, but he's got no technical ability. So Wes Morgan will now be coming back for the, until the end of this episode. Robert Huth will, will be back. He's not, like, banned for the rest of the series. But as, as a punishment for literally losing us two points there against Norwich... Uh, he'll probably be uh, missing for the rest of this episode. As you can see the background there, just a moment ago, we got our first scout report back there from our youth scout, scout Soren Christensen, who is out in Denmark in his home country. And he brought back, I think, one player with 92 overall, and uh, he will go into the youth academy. As you can see, there is the squad in the background, though, for this game. Riyad Mahrez returning to the bench, uh, and Wes Morgan coming back into the side 
uh, to replace Robert Huth. Mazuaku also back into the side to replace uh, Jeffrey Schlupp. But as you can see, Southampton going forward with the first chance of the game there in 24th minute. A good save, though, from Kasper Schmeichel. But Bruno Perez now turning in. He's finding himself in a very attacking position. Puts the ball to the back post for Brutal Donald Dembolo, who gets his head on it. And that makes it 1-0 in just the 27th minute. Fantastic work there from Bruno Perez, the Brazilian right back there, to get to the byline. It's a fantastic ball in. And Mbolo jumps the highest. And Kevin Davis there, in or Kelvin Davis, sorry, in the Southampton goal has absolutely no chance. And that is Brutal Donald Mbolo's second goal in the Barclays Premier League and third goal overall. But as you can see, Southampton there hitting the bar with Jordi Clazzi. They're the deflected clearance, ending up falling right onto the head of the Dutchman. And somehow he's hit the bar, but now going into the second half, we're going forward again. And Golo Kante finding Mbolo. He finds it Inla in the centre, but it's fallen to Jamie Vardy after Kelvin Davis makes the save from Gokhan Inla. And it's now 2-0. Some fantastic passing play there. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the, the, the finish in the end straight away. But it does fall to Jamie Vardy, who gets his second goal in the Bar Barclays Premier League and gets our second goal of this match. And we're now 2 0 up and now onto the hour mark. Jamie Vardy has been set away again by Brill and then Bar He's going to try and cut inside past Jose Fonte. He finds Gokan Inlet on the edge of the area, who just unfortunately curls his side footed shot wide of the post. Eight minutes later, Andy King has found Jamie Vardy, who skipped past the challenge and found Mbolo, and it's now 3 0. Southampton, we thought we were going to pose the biggest threat. But fantastic play there from Jamie Vardy, skipping past the challenge there of Stephen Davis and uh, slotting it in there for Mbolo. And that's a lovely finish straight into the top corner. Only about eight yards out, but realistically a fantastic finish there. In the 69th minute, in his fourth goal for the club, we're going forward again now, this time with Andy King, who's going to try and find the overlap there from Riyad Mahrez, a substitute, skipping past challenges, and he hits the post. And that's why we've been missing Riyad Mahrez, just to inject that bit of skill into the squad. Uh, Oriol Romeu trying to get a consolation goal there for Southampton, but it's an easy save for Kasper Schmeichel, and the game in the end does end 3-0. How we've managed to win that so convincingly, I will never know, but as you can see, Brill Donald Mbolo, they're the main man, Shot, uh, shots three, goals two, very good stuff from Brill Donald Mbolo, and as a sort of reward, we're giving him two slots in training, Pione Sisto's getting two slots in training as well for the first of uh, the training weeks, I'll be showing you three training weeks uh, in this episode, but as you can see, Pione Sisto is now a 76 overall, and Mbolo is extremely Extremely close to being a 7-7 overall. We also trained, uh, trained Andre Kramerich uh, in one slot this week. Uh, moving on to the next week, and because we'd already got Pione Sisto up and overall, we decided to uh, we decided to factor in uh, Fukuato Mazuaku and also give Andre Kramerich uh, two slots. And as you can see now, Brill Don Donald Mbolo has gone up and overall. So that's Sisto up to 76, and Mbolo now to 77 in the space of two weeks. On Kramerich now getting two slots, and uh, also a slot there for Mazuaku, as I mentioned. Uh, Kramerich now getting two slots in the third training week of this episode, third and final one. Uh, ben Chilwell, as was requested in the comment section, is getting one. Uh, one training slot as well, and then Bolo will get two. And as you can see, Andre Kramerich is now very, very close to going up to 74 overall. So that is it for training, and we'll now move into the third game of this episode against Crystal Palace. We're at home at the King Power Stadium. After two away games in this episode, we now return back to Leicester. And as you can see, Riyad Mahrez is into the side to replace Nathan Dyer. We've got Jamie Vardy and Mbolo up front yet again. Andy King's into the side to replace Gok and Inla. Uh, as you can see, we are getting the first chance of the game. Just three minutes in. Kante there finding Andy King and a low driven shot there. Just wide of the far post there from Andy King. Very good strike. As you can see though, Crystal Palace going forward with Yannick Balassi. Maron Shamak finding some space and then passing it back to Joe Ledley. And the strike outside of the area there is saved fairly comfortably in the end from Kasper Schmeichel. From the resulting corner, it comes in in the 21st minute. It's headed away, thankfully, and only as far as Riyad Mahrez here. And uh, he's managed to skip past the challenge there of Damian Delaney. And there's an overlapping run being made there by Brill Donald Mbolo. And look at the amount of space he's in. Bruno Perez is getting forward as well in the area. It's, it's passed to him. And Bruno Perez has scored his first goal for Leicester City. No, don't even ask me why the right back was in that sort of situation on the breakaway. But the interesting stat. That is the first time an, a, a player who isn't a striker has scored for us in this entire series. Andy King is trying to make it too there, but it's a good save from Wayne Hennessy in the Palace goal. Can't say they're finding Mares, but again, saved there by Hennessy at his near post in injury time in the second half. But yeah, Bruno Perez getting his first goal for Leicester in the first non-striker goal this entire series. And he's trying to get a brace there, but forcing a good save, good one-handed save there from Wayne Hennessy. Now, ball into the box here. It's not being cleared at all. Where's Morgan trying to get rid of it? there but it's picked up again uh, by Shamak trying to get rid of this ball and it's ended up hitting the bar from Fraser Campbell 
There were about seven opportunities there to clear the ball away, but neither Morgan nor Riedervold could actually get their foot on it. And in the end, we do survive. We do take the 1-0 win thanks to that man there, Bruno Perez. Fantastic goal. Well, not a fantastic goal, but a decent counter-attacking goal. Uh, Riyad Mahrez finding Mbolo and then finding Perez. As you can see, here is how that episode affects the table. We are actually sitting third, sitting very pretty in third there. We've played a game less than quite a lot of the other teams around us there, including Spurs and Manchester United behind us. At the top of the table, still Chelsea and uh, Newcastle United. But as you can see, way down there in 18th, someone actually asked me in the comments section last episode, where the hell were Manchester City? They're down in 18th place lost six of their first nine games in the season, which is quite astonishing. So they're going to have to work very hard to get the title from there. But nevertheless, um, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of FIFA 16 Career Mode. If you did, feel free to smash the likes button. Uh, 80 likes on this series would be absolutely massively appreciated, as per usual. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe for FIFA 16 Career Mode content and tips videos in the future. Comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much, as well as telling me who you would want me to, uh, to train as well. Now, I have taken note of the question of the day from last episode, which was about whether I should take the Portuguese national offer or not. I've decided to wait an episode to see what you guys say again in this comment section because it was quite split, and then we'll see what happens next time out. But nevertheless, it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.